Yer, what is good, Regis recipients? How are y'all doing today? Let me know in the comment section. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to this episode of Regis Reflections. Y'all already know each and every episode, we have a different athlete on this podcast. But this week, for Valentine's Day, something special, we had to switch it up and get my dog, my brother, Liam here on the podcast, who is an entrepreneur, something very unique and different. But say what's up to the people, Liam. How are we doing? What an honor. What an honor. What an intro, too. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today, Liam? Where, how is your mental on a scale of one to ten? My mental, I'd give it a solid 8.7. I'd 8.7. say it's pretty good, you know? Yeah. It, it's off to a good day. Got classes after this, so not ideal, but it, it's all right, man. How about you? What, what are you on? Right now, I would say, I'll say, honestly, I'll give it an 8 as well. The weather is good. It's nice outside. It's sunny. Thank God in South Bend. You know, good vibes, good energy. We're almost there. We're almost to Wednesday. If you make it a Wednesday, you're halfway through the week. That's right. not thinking about it. That's not thinking about it. Well, thank you, Liam, for joining me on this podcast Regis recipients, Liam here created the Desi app. And Liam, could you just talk about what this Desi app is for the people that do not know? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so we created Desi um, here in Notre Dame. And, you know, our kind of our one-liners were a college-exclusive marketplace connecting classmates for rides. So a little bit of the backstory, we got to campus. Uh, we, as in my three co-founders, myself and two others, shout out Zach Brown, uh, my CTO and Rob Corrado, my CMO, great guys. They're both abroad, but we're all Notre Dame juniors. Uh, mm -hmm. We got here our freshman year, and we saw a huge gap in the market. We saw Uber sucked. It was awful. The wait times, the price, it was a nightmare. So we really dug into, you know, how can we how can we disrupt this market? Uh, because we saw a huge need, and we built Desi out, and it's been growing. We've got 25% of Notre Dame using the platform regularly, so we're super stoked about it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thanks. sir. That's, that's good. No, 25%. <laughs> hey. We'll take it. We'll take it. Oh, that so it's basically. Would you say it's a, a better, like a college version of Uber in a sense? A little bit, a little bit. You mm. could call it that. You know, we noticed there were a lot of students looking for for work, right, mm. for flexible gig opportunities. So we figured, why not connect them to all the kids who need all these rides, right, going mm. to downtown and whatnot uh, for an affordable affordable rate. So. That's kind of what we're up to. And we also discovered, you know, we can really help bring student dollars to local economies, to South Bend, mm -hmm. which has been the coolest thing to watch. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it's, it's been such a journey and it's been so fun to watch it grow. And we had our first revenue earlier this month. So yes, we're, we're yes, stoked sir, about yes, that. Sir. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wow. So when creating this app, along with your co along with the co-founders as well, how did that just process you all just kind of we're thinking together in a sense of creating it for the better student body or how was it, what was your process throughout that? Yeah, it was a really, it was a lengthy, rigorous process. We mm. really set out to create something as students that we needed and we wanted. Mm. Um, one thing we spent a lot of time doing was research, right? You yeah. kind of got to figure out, we saw a huge need, but like, what does that solution look like? What's the special sauce, mm. that special insight? that you need to build a billion dollar company. And that's what we spent a lot of time doing. Uh, you know, countless user interviews, surveys, you name it, we did it. Um, and to be honest with you, you know, our freshman year, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't even know what a pitch deck was or how to build a business model and a whole, you know, a 40 page business plan. So that's something that all, you know, took a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, but we did the hard work and, you know, here we are today. Wow, wow. so how much time would you say you put really into creating this app? Because I know a lot of people, they want to do, they want to create businesses and they think, you know, it's going to be easy just like that overnight. They don't know that, you know, I saw a famous quote, in order to walk into the store and not look at the price, you have to be able to work and not look at the clock. How do you, how are you able to just kind of, you know, put that work ethic in that, in a sense? Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I think for the first time we've noticed these past couple of months, we've gotten all this, you know, kind of attention and praise and people are using it. It's all great. Mm. But nobody was there when we were like cleaning the toilets. I like to say we clean the toilets to build the palace. That's my favorite saying mm. um, to our team. But yeah, we were so we started freshman year. We kind of went into this like, you know, oh, we'll see what happens. And we really unraveled this this entire kind of really we think it's a, a 14 billion dollar opportunity. Um, that's what we think our, you know, available market size is. But we, you know, we we spent, uh, you know, kind of. I would say anywhere from like 10 to 20 hours per week, you know, uh, looking at freshman year. And then we really ramped it up um, come sophomore year. We started spending, I would say, like, you know, 30 to 40 hours a week on the business. Um, mm. But looking now, this past summer, I was on the business full time. 
uh, with my co-founders. And, you know, it's really difficult to manage that in school. You know, That's you're true. basically doing a full-time job and more and then being a student as well. Um, so right now I'm, I would say I'm spending around like 80 hours a week on this business. Wow, um, plus. that's a job. That is yeah. a job. Yeah, so it's it's a lot. It's a lot. You kind of sacrifice your college experience, but, you know, I, would, I wouldn't change it for the world, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So we already know Notre Dame is an academic, rigorous school on top of that already. That's on the top. You got and it. now you all have created this company and put endless hours in, even weekends, nights, and everything like that. How do you kind of t- how do you balance that along with being such at, at an academic rigorous school along with your co-founders? How do you find that balance? Yeah, it's a tough balance. Um, you know, initially that was one where I was kind of I wanted to be the best student I could be, get that 4.0, build a business, and kind of realized you know you kind of have to sacrifice one. It's kind of one or the other. You know, do you believe in the business or do you want that 4.0? So I made the mm-hmm. decision. You know, come my kind of second semester sophomore year, you know, this thing is looking promising. Um, maybe I don't need that 4.0. Exactly. That was kind of what mm-hmm. I looked at it like. And, you know, I'm very, I love to be here. I love to be a student. I wouldn't, you know, change my trajectory of like my degree and all of that, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing I've definitely done is, is focus more time on, you know, getting those assignments in, but maybe they're not perfect per se. Exactly. Um, and that's kind of the sacrifice you have to make, unfortunately. Um, so we, we try our best. We try our best. Um, I reduced to as few credits as possible mm-hmm. um, so I could really pursue the business. Um, you know, luckily, the Notre Dame administration has been great about supporting us and kind of letting us, you know, be flexible around some credit hours and stuff like that. Um, so that's been helpful. Um, but overall, yeah, it's definitely, you know, the teachers, professors aren't always the most <laughs> supportive uh Actually, they don't really know they don't understand they what know. you're doing you know yeah so you just keep going keep going wow wow so throughout this whole process of creating the app and the long hours and everything like that how was your mental process throughout the whole journey because i know like were there times where you thinking about giving up or just questioning is it really worth it in the end and you see now you're still you're still part of the business and now it's growing rapidly and you're doing a successful job so how was your mental process just throughout the whole process yeah, that's that's one of the toughest things. And that's mm-hmm. something I was excited to talk about, you know, mm-hmm. when you when you kind of reached out. Um, being a founder is one of the most mentally challenging things because everything is moving so fast. And because it's moving so fast, everything can like change in a dime. Um, mm-hmm. You know, one second, everything's going great. Another second, oh, my gosh, the app crashed. There's a problem, um, you know, whatnot. So it's an emotional roller coaster. And mm-hmm. one thing you kind of have to realize is you got to have a North Star. You got to know what you're working towards. What's the goal here? There's mm-hmm. going to be ups, there's going to be downs throughout the entire process, mentally, especially. And you've got to realize, like, why did I get into this business? Why am I doing this? Why am I dedicating so much time? And that's something that I really reflect on a lot. And I encourage a lot of my team to reflect on a lot in that, why are you here? You know, why are you? Mm-hmm at the end of the day, this thing could completely flop and we make no money, right? That could 100% happen. But why are we still doing this? Why do we keep pushing forward? And I think it's important to really reflect on what those answers are regularly. Um, I almost do it daily. You know, I, I really reflect and, and have it written on my wall. You know, what what's the goal here? You know, what do we see down the road? You know, look at how many people we're affecting right now. 25% of a, you know, 8,000 campus of undergrads. Um, so yeah, so I, I would say, yeah, it, it's a tough one for sure. Um, but it's such a cool kind of journey to go through, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So basically you're basically upon of finding out the why, why are you doing this? Why for the business? And then, and yeah, no, I think it's a good question mm-hmm. and there's definitely a bunch of whys, but yeah. I would say the why for what I do is mm-hmm. how we can have such an impact on the student lives of campus. We can, we are changing how people move around a college campus. Mm-hmm. We are creating a product that's used by so many students. And that's the coolest thing to do. Um, you know, I sat in on a user interview um, last this past weekend, and we interviewed a girl who I didn't know. She was a freshman. Um, and she said with a completely straight face, I would die for Desi. I love this thing so freaking much. Um, I would die for Desi. And I think, you know, that's an extreme example. And I'm mm-hmm. sure, you know, that's totally drama. But I do think like that there is some truth to her saying that in that we're creating something that somebody is so passionate about and loves so very much and uses every weekend and every night Mm -hmm. that that's my why. There's just nothing cooler than, you know, changing how the world works and how people move and how people relate and connect. We're creating a community, you know? 
Wow, that's true. The Notre Dame is already a community itself, but you all are creating a community within Notre Dame already, and it's just growing rapidly. That's just very, that's very inspirational in a sense. Very inspirational. Yeah, thanks, man. So, like, after college, once you graduate, I know you're a junior, you have another year under your belt. After college, do you want to continue with this Desi app? What are your aspirations, your goals, along with your co-founders with this app? Yeah, yeah. So we've long believed, you know, this is a problem at uh, many, many college schools. Um, you know, there's two, 20 million uh, U.S. college students, and majority of those schools are really suffering from the same need. Mm-hmm. You know, take away the schools like NYU, USC, the ones in urban centers where mm-hmm. Uber's great, right? Yeah. But there's all these other, majority of these other schools that are really struggling. And that's not even talking about beyond colleges, looking at other communities. I'm from Burlington, Vermont. We don't have Uber or Lyft at all there. Uh, it's horrible. So we could even, you know, do the Facebook model and continue to grow this thing. So for us, you know, it was definitely a question we always ask about, like, you know, how how much we want to take this thing? How far do we want to take this thing? And we ultimately kind of got to the bottom of the answer was, yes, we want to take this thing post-grad. Um, and kind of solidifying, solidifying that answer, yes, was taking on capital. Uh, we raised a pre-seed this past summer. Uh, and closed it and kind of the, you know, when you raise money, your goal is to to take this on full time to really scale this thing to as big as it can be. Mm-hmm. Mm. So after once you graduate, are you looking to talk to other schools about using this app for them as well? Or kind of are you going in a different kind of area path for that? Yeah. So right now we're even talking to, uh, uh, you know, the numbers around 50 mm-hmm. uh, schools right now about that we're getting ready to kind of begin the process of, you know, what does a pilot look like? Mm-hmm. You know, do we launch this full time? Is it on a smaller scale? What not? So we've definitely got a very, we've, we've got a five year plan, you know, for mm-hmm. we think this thing's very scalable uh, to many campuses. So right now we're, we're kind of in that process already of, you know, how soon do we want to scale this thing to the next three campuses, four campuses, 10 campuses, 20 campuses. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say that that process begins sooner than you'd think just because there's a lot of time and effort and money involved in, you know, making sure and rolling these campuses out. Mm, that's good. That's good. So you yourself, you and your co-founders are an entrepreneur. You all started a business. And similar to me, with me starting this podcast, I know there are doubters everywhere. There are people that are going to hate. They're going to criticize. They're going to be in your ear and everything like that. How did you personally deal with those doubters about your business saying, oh, it's, probably, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to reach the top of what you think. How did you mentally deal with that? Dude, that's that's my fuel to the fire. There's nothing more satisfying than someone telling you no, someone telling me this this shit's never gonna work. Um, I'll never forget my freshman year. Um, I had a kid who I who I knew kind of relatively, um, and he said, "Man, this thing's never gonna work. Like, I, there's no way." Like, and he didn't say it from a place of like, you know, you're a failure kind of thing. He just literally didn't think this thing was gonna work, and that was all the fuel I needed. Um, I wrote. I put um, the famous picture of uh, of Michael Jordan where he's really locked in on that in that All Star game mm-hmm. uh, with Kobe and, and I forget who else, but I I framed that picture and put it up on my wall when that kid said that all the way back freshman year. And I always look at that picture whenever I'm working, whenever I'm in doubt, and look at that picture and remember what that kid said. And he said, "I don't think this is gonna work." And every time little traction happens, mm-hmm. I always think back to that. Or whenever there's a down low, you know, or a, a low point, I think mm-hmm. back to that. And I think that's a huge, huge piece. You got to have that motivation. You got to be ready when somebody tells you, no, you can't do this, to overcome that and be even more vo- motivated to get around that and prove them wrong. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, man. I applaud you. I think anyone who's doing something like this and is getting doubt, that's a very good sign. Um, you know, if you're on to something, the whole point of, uh, of investments in these big billion dollar companies is that you, you see something before others do. You understand something before society understands something. So it's only natural that people in society, when you see something they don't understand, they're going to doubt it. They're going to doubt you. And eventually you begin to prove them wrong over time as your thesis begins to prove out. You start to change how people think, how they interact, how they innovate. And that's mm. exactly what we're doing and what you're doing as well. You know, the doubters will be there. Exactly. Inspiration, brother. You inspire me each and every single day. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I know with businesses and being an entrepreneur, there are slow days. Not every day is going to be a great day. Slow days, the app, like you say, it crashes. So just who knows what. How do you get over the hump of that and not let that affect your mental in a sense? Yeah, man. Ah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one. Again, you know, that's another another great question. Um, 
But I would say one thing I really rely on heavily is is my co-founders and my mm. team. Um, we have a team of about 10 of us now. Ooh. And what I rely on heavily is the, you know, the kind of the culture we're building mm. and the relationships we're building as well. You know, I think that's been the coolest, coolest thing to watch is not only are we growing this company, but we're growing ourselves and our culture and our relationships and whatnot that will last far beyond whenever this company, you know, IPOs or, or fails, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's something that I really rely on heavily on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly in meetings and syncs with my team, and that's the best part of my day. Uh, you know, even if it's if it's all remote, I, I still love it because I get to connect and, and link with them. And, you know, we're all going through the same problems. You know, being a founder is known to be one of the loneliest things because you're tackling problems that nobody else is, is mm. facing, exactly. if that makes sense. But the more you can rope your team into these problems, the more you don't feel alone, right? Mm. So that's been such a cool thing to like begin um, to do as we begin to get bigger and you know, bring on more, of, uh, you know, more students to the team. Oh, wow. I really, I'm just such in awe. This is like I'm learning just so much. It's <laughs> amazing. I really love it. I'm proud of you. Proud of you so much. So Man. a lot of people want to create businesses, want to become an entrepreneur, they just don't really have that startup or just don't know that why. What advice would you kind of give to them on starting that business? Yeah, so my biggest thing is you got you to gotta care about the problem. You really have to care about the problem. Um, you need a great need, right? I mm -hmm. think even if, even if you don't have that need, even if you don't have that great problem, um, there's so many good ways to get involved, to start a company. Um, and kind of two things... You know, in the startup world, are, there's either a cash flow business, which kind of generates revenue steadily and not at a, you know, not at a, a great rate, um, or there's venture scalable businesses that take a lot of cash up front, um, are usually negative, and then begin to scale very rapidly and become these massive, massive companies. So I would encourage anyone who's looking to get involved and, you know, I'm not really sure where to start, start with a cash flow business. There are so many great ideas out there that can be easily replicated. Um, you know, I know... So many kids who, who in my kind of town did the, did the lawn mowing, did all that stuff. Like that's such a minor thing, but there's so many like other things of reselling of all this other stuff that like can be done to really get the foundation. I think you've got to secure that first win early. You've got mm. to get that first W, you know, whether it's with, with your, with a business on a small, as even the smallest scale, it's important to kind of get that win, um, to be able to then go and say, wow, I can do this. And then let's let's really build something that's on a bigger scale. So I don't know. I would encourage everyone at some point in their lives to really, you know, focus in on an idea, build their company, you know, become an entrepreneur. It's such some of the skills you learn and the rate you're learning at them is, is pretty unbelievable. Um, and it's very applicable to many other parts of, of life outside of even just business. Mm, mm, interesting technique. You heard it. You heard it. So one final question, Liam, before we wrap things up. What advice would you give to the listeners and viewers out there on their mental health journey? Yeah, I don't know. I'd have a couple things to say. Mm -hmm. The first would be, um, the first would be reflect on on yourself. Like, what's your why? I think that's the biggest important reason. You know, it's kind of been a theme about what I've how I've answered some other questions on this podcast. Mm -hmm. But I think it's super, super important to, to kind of be one with yourself, to reflect, you know, what, what am I, you know, why am I doing this? What am I doing it for? What's the goal? You know, that's a huge, huge thing of, of your mental health. Um, I think it's so easy to lose sight of, of what's truly important. Um, you know, I know a lot of times when I struggle with my mental health, I forget, you know, I forget my emotion. I forget my core. I forget my why. Mm -hmm. And that's super important to reflect on. Um, and I think part of that also, you got to have someone who, who's there for you. You got to have someone who you can check in with. Exactly. Um, and for me, you know, I have someone I can emotionally check in with. Um, you know, I'm really tight with my co-founders in that way where if something's awry, you know, we can really rely on each other and lean in onto each other. And that's a super important relationship to have. And then I also kind of have my, you know, work relationships and dynamics that are tough. If there's ever, you know, complexities between the co-founders or anything like that, we have a great advisory network who's who we lean on heavily to check in with if, you know, our mental health is, isn't doing well, if, if we're struggling, you know, from a business sense. So that's super important as well. Um, the other the other kind of thing I would say, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. But the other thing I would say is to really reflect like reflect. I, every day I meditate for about like 20 minutes, mm -hmm. um, when I wake up and that's super important part of my day. Um, you know, I know 
we have all these these kind of classes coming from a Catholic school of, you know, meditate, reflect, you know, read the Bible, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And your faith, you know, I'm personally, I think faith is important, but it's really important to have something to reflect of just a blank mind space. Um, you know, I think we get so caught up with kind of the speed of, of life and doing everything and social media. That's a whole nother thing that we could open into. But that really affects and plays with your mental health. And I think having, even if it's 20, 10 minutes a day, to just be there and be present, not even thinking, I think of literally a black hole, black space, <laughs> and just get in the zone mm -hmm. and reflect. And then, I don't know, man, it, it's some of the best and most rewarding 20 minutes of my day because I literally am not thinking about anything and I mm -hmm. feel refreshed right after, no matter how stressful or busy you know, my day head's gonna be. Oh, wow, that is some great advice. Regis recipients, you heard it from my dog Liam right here. Liam, I want to thank you again for joining me on this episode. Regis recipients, make sure I'll put the link to the Desi app in the comment section. Make sure to check it out. Show my boy some love. He and his co-founders are doing some great things out here. They're changing the culture. They're changing the community here on campus. Such an inspiration. Thank you again, Liam. Regis recipients, remember, it's okay to not be okay. You matter. Any last words, Liam? That's, I think that last line says it all, man. Yes. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate yes, it. Sir. This was fun. Thank so you. Thank so you. check out check out the Desi app. You got it. Uh, check out the podcast. And I love it, man. Yes. Awesome. Yes, Keep sir. doing your stuff. It's your boy, JD, and I'm out.